Hey guys, Jody Holland here with the Psyche of Success video blog, and I have Jason, also known as Zumba Jason, out of Abilene, Texas, on the line with me. He's going to be talking a little bit about himself, what he defines as success, the things that he has struggled with and overcome, and basically why he's such an awesome guy. So, if you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do so, but let's get right in here and get started. So Jason, tell me a little bit more about you. All right, so Jason Hernandez. Well, I guess you can say um, I've been in Abilene for probably 13 years now. Went to McMurray University here in Abilene, and that's where I graduated. That's my alma mater. And so my degree is in communication, religion, and my emphasis is public relation. Awesome. And, you know, yeah, as soon as I graduated from there, um, I kind of accidentally fell into a different world of dance choreography. And, um, it, for a while there, I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do with it, so I went and got a, a license to teach a dance class called Zumba, awesome. and that was back in 2008, so almost 10 years now, and so that was back in 2008, January 12th, and so when I started that, it kind of just took off from there. Um, I just I didn't start Zumba right away, though. I was actually working for Hendrick Medical Center and the Trauma Center. And so I was actually their business um, public relations liaison there. And so it was a really great job. A year and a half there, they decided that that job was no longer needed. Um, so I was teaching classes still part-time on the side outside of working 12 hours a day, you know, at Hendrix. Yeah. And, yeah, so I started teaching classes at Rose Park. Started off with about five people in class, for example. And before I knew it, um, I was teaching out at the YMCA, and I had a class of over 150 people in a class. And I had, yeah, it was it was really crazy. It, it all it was was just marketing and te and talking to people and networking. And so after I kind of like blew up from the Y, I had two students come up and say, "Hey, you need to open up your own studio. We need more classes." Yeah. And I really never thought about offering more classes because I was already teaching plenty of classes then. And so um, I guess between, between the success of like working and saving and investing, um, you know, of course, when I opened up my dance studio back in 2011, I ran that for five and a half years, an amazing place in the Mall of Abilene. And I ran that successfully for five and a half years. Um, basically, I invested my money and made that back in about eight months of my business there, the first eight months of being in the mall. Yeah. And I bought out my other two business partners. They were they were kind of no longer interested in sticking with it. You know, if you if you're in business, you got to be in it for the long haul. You're working yeah. long hours and you're working for yourself. And so, really, um, when I took over, um, I I bought them out. And then again, it took me about five months to pay that debt off. And I'm really just one of those people that never lived outside my means. I've always stayed. If I always made more money, I didn't necessarily spend more. I just yeah. went ahead and put it away and saved. And so kind of after that, it's kind of where I'm at today. Um, we know when we left the mall, um, the library went into that location. And I was like, well, do I really want to do this all over again? Do I want to start all over from the beginning? And so I told myself, no, I love my, running my own business. But the next step was actually helping people um, in business consulting. And so I kind, of, I kind of do that for small businesses. People, I mean, even if it's just trainers or instructors out there that are wanting to learn how learning to do what I used to do yeah. um, that's kind of what I do now and of course I sell insurance full-time now so that's kind of where I'm at today holy cow I didn't know you added that so uh, what year yeah. was it that you went through leadership Abilene because that's where you and I met yeah leadership Abilene happened in 2013 um, I mean I've been involved with the chamber here in Abilene ever since I opened my studio so that was even before um, when I was at the Y, so I was really active in the community back in 2010. Okay. So just two years of college, I just jumped right into working with the chamber, volunteering. Um, I got on the Hispanic Leadership Council board, and so I served my term there. And now I'm meeting next week actually to get on the board with the Hope Haven, which is a transitional home for homeless people. So. Yeah, that's an incredible, incredible group. So very cool. And I didn't actually realize you had a communication degree. That's the same degree I have. Uh, yes. I started at McMurray and ended up at Angelo State. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, but it was 1990 when I was at McMurray, so a few years before. Well, so I was the last class that, you know, because they dealt away the, with the communication program there. I and so that. I was the last class to graduate with that degree from McMurray. Oh, man. I did not realize that they had gotten rid of that. 
Yeah. So. All right. So when you look at all of the things that you've gone through building a business, now doing business consulting and selling insurance, if you were to define what is Jason's definition of success? Um, you know, that's a, that's a really good question. I, I thought much about that last night. And, you know, a lot of people, success for them is, you know, money. It's having nice things. For me, my success is just being my happiness. I guess you can say I've done a lot of different things successfully because, um, you know, there's always that level of success when you, you're successful, you're, you feel like you're done, but then what's the next success level? What's the next yeah. success level? And so um, just because one door closes, I mean, doesn't mean that it's the end. There's plenty of doors that are open and you can enter all those doors. But for me, I guess you say my definition of success for me is just um, to be happy to be happy and love what you're doing. Yeah. So finding that passion and, and that kind of rhythm. Yeah. I mean, just the, the desire to not just help people and I mean, not just help yourself, but to help people also, you know, and, and just to inspire the world. I feel like a lot of where I get my motivation is from people and not necessarily, yeah. I'm very self-motivated, but I feed my energy off of people. So yeah, and man, you do bring an energy with you. <laughs> you livened up the Leadership Aveline class. It was awesome. So, oh, yeah, that was a great program. So Very cool. So the next question I have for you is, you know, when times get tough, how do you push through those tough times or through your worst times? You know, I think for me, I deal a lot with that. Those tough times are a little differently than most people. I tend to add something to my plate. You know, and I, I feel like when it's the thing, when the things that are tough for you, um, you, for me, I have to add something so that I can successfully finish something and come back to that project, you know, or it gives me a different outlook on what I'm doing with a certain project or something. So I say for me to push through things that are tough is to add more to my plate and, and that not, not necessarily everybody can do that, but right. for me, I have to juggle several things to keep to keep going and yeah. you know I've been I've been that ever since high school you know so um, even when I was in senior in, in high school I was a student body president I was the drum major I played football I just actually had to do everything all at once so yeah so you yeah you are pretty intense as a as an instructor and a, as well as a communicator so that makes sense that you would kind of intensify your schedule as well <laughs> yeah so I guess you say like if I yeah if I find like a so if I'm stuck on something, I, I, add, I add more to my schedule, I guess there you, you can go. say. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and I, actually I know several other entrepreneurs that are the same way, that they, they kind of get freaked out if they get stuck on something. So like, okay, let me add this because I know I can go kick that butt and, and then I'll go back to this other thing. So, I mean, because, you know, like if you get stuck somewhere, then you, you kind of have to take a break from it. And then if you go at a project and you successfully complete it, it motivates you and inspires you more. And then you want to come back and finish that other project. So. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. Winning creates winning. So yeah. Next, yeah. Next, next question I've got for you is, you know, from a stress standpoint, is there anything that keeps you awake at night? And if so, what is it? Um, You know, I think... You know, it's hard for me to sleep. I guess that's the biggest thing is, and, and I think nowadays it's hard for a lot of people to sleep just because of we have that fear of missing out. We call it the FOMO. You know, we're on social media, we're always on something. But for me, the thing that keeps me up is, I guess you can say, my motivation to like, like I'm, I'm always excited. You know, even when there's days like when people are like, "Hey, why are you? What's wrong? Is something going on?" I was like, "Nope, today is just an off day. I'm quiet," and you know. I, yeah. I might have one of those days once a year or something, and it's crazy. But, you know, the real thing that keeps me awake at night, I guess you can say, is just um, I'm just always motivated to be doing something. I think about my nephews and nieces. I have nine nephews and nieces, and I know right. adulting is not easy. So yeah. I'm like, it's going to be hard for them one day. So I think for me, what keeps me up at night is the constant reminder of how to stay motivated, how to, how to continue to stay successful. And, you know, because for me, if – I get to that level where it's like I'm not doing something or I don't have a project. I don't get depressed, but I get like anxiety, like what's yeah. the next step? Like I need to continue to have something going. So um, I think yeah. that's the thing that keeps me up at night is not knowing uh, if I have an empty schedule, then I have to add to it. So I'm continuously trying to think about what can I put onto my schedule. Yeah, So that makes sense. So out of curiosity, I haven't asked anybody else this, but 
when I first went into business, I was 27 and I slept about four hours a night. So when you talk about not sleeping a lot. I was kind of curious. I, about 38, 39 years old, all of a sudden I needed more sleep. But my whole adult life until about 38, it was, I slept from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Yeah, and you know, and I think, I mean, I'm, I'm 32 now. And I still probably get about five or six hours of sleep. Before, I mean, I would stay up and probably get three or four hours of sleep, you know, in my 20s. But um, I just think a lot of entrepreneur mindsets, that that's just kind of how we function. You know, yeah. we, we – and and most people are like, you need eight hours of sleep. And I'm like, well, I feel like I don't need eight hours no. of sleep. I'm, I'm missing out on something or I need to complete a project or um, I need to get ahead on the next plan. So Yeah, I still feel lazy if I sleep eight hours in a night. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, if I go to bed by nine o'clock, I don't even want to get up at six, seven in the morning. I want to sleep till 12. But if I go to bed... <laughs> And at like one or two in the morning, I'm wide awake at six or seven a.m. and ready yeah. to go, ready to rock again. So ready to rock. Again. When you when you think about some of the habits that you put in place, because obviously you've been successful at everything you've done so far, and you, I have no doubt, you will be on your insurance business as well. So by the way, if anybody watching this does not have insurance, definitely hit Jason up. A little plug farmers, I work for Farmers Insurance. Yes, Farmers, yeah. that's awesome. Great insurance company. So what are some of your habits of success that have helped you to this point? Um, you know, honestly, I would say, like, I don't think I have it in here, but I, I carry a calendar with me um, in my backpack or yeah. e even with me in my car. I am a very, a lot, I'm very old school when it comes to, like, booking things. I don't put stuff in my phone. I mean, I do, but it seems to get lost sometimes, even yeah. in a calendar on your phone. Yeah. I have to write it down. So I use like an old school calendar. Like I set it on my desk. I look at it every day, every morning. Um, and sometimes when I'm like, what, what do I have to do this week? I'll look at that calendar because I know it's written down. So I say that is one success of habit I have is continuously using a written calendar, writing things down. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and even, even though I'm at the office sometimes with farmers, I think – a big habit of mine for being successful is I network a lot with people and I just visit businesses. Even if it's, even if I'm going to not sell a product or yeah. um, if I don't have anything for them, I'm just going to build a relationship with people. Um, you know, sometimes I like going into one of the hair salons and just saying hi to everybody and giving my energy yeah. and Hey, y'all have a great day and you know, be blessed. And I hope y'all have some great customers coming today and y'all have a great one. So I think that's a big success habit for me is just, um, networking and building relationships with people. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. And I, I think you really hit the key there and that everything you do, whether it's with Zumba or small business consulting or insurance, it's still about the relationship. It's still about connecting with people, caring about people. And I love what you said in the with the hair salon statement, giving your energy to people. Because, God, are we desperate for good energy from people anymore. Yeah. So. yeah and, and you're just making somebody's day. I mean, you can completely turn their attitude into a complete 180, you know, 360. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, flip them on their side there. Let them enjoy themselves. Flip them all the way up. Yeah. Um, all right. So if you were to share with the viewers here, what is the best lesson that you've learned related to success that you think would help them what would that lesson be? Um, that lesson would be continue to be patient. Um, you know, I know even even I have some friends that are really young, 20, 21, and I continue to say is, you know, my biggest saying is delayed gratification. Like, um, you don't need it right now. Like, do yeah. you really want to go spend all this money on a cell phone or – you want to wait till you can actually afford it later. Yeah. Um, so I think the biggest lesson I've learned is to put things on hold if you don't need them right away. Be patient and always be willing to learn and don't stop learning. Um, education, or you know, it doesn't have to be necessarily going to, to school or sitting down and writing something out, but it could be just simply reading a book, yeah. maybe um, 30 minutes a day, or if it's just... Uh, sitting down and reading quotes, but it's a, it's a non-stop learning. I like to say, um, don't stop learning. So right. that's, that's kind of a, a big lesson I've learned is to never stop learning and to be patient. Very cool. I'll, I'll kind of throw in there. Dr. Carol Dweck wrote a book called Mindset. If you haven't read it, you'd probably enjoy it. But one of the things she talks about is what you just said is the key to success for her. And she said that 
you either have a growth mindset, you're always learning, always growing, continuing to move forward. If you fail, you learn from it. Or you have a fixed mindset. You get to a right. certain point and you go, well, that's it. I'm out of school. I can't do anything else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I'm always online looking at stuff. Like, you know, yes, I've had my insurance license for two years and I've kind of been using it part of time on the side. But, I mean, there's stuff I'm always looking online and, and learning how to get another certification. Or I have nine Zumba certifications right now. Holy and, cow. yeah, and so, and this is funny because last month, I had a friend ask me to um, do her wedding, and so I was like, okay, I mean, my first, my next step is I have to go online and get this ordained ministry license, and so I went online, did it, and so as soon as I, she like put it out there online, she's like, hey, my friend Jason's going to be doing my wedding, and then I had two other people message me like, hey, are you, you're, not, you're ordained, can you come do our wedding, and I was like, Okay, let me get through my first one first. <laughs> yeah. I just need to get through the first one first. So That's awesome. I, I went to Christian National Church online. That's where I got my yeah. <laughs> ordination from, and I'm doing my first wedding in September. See, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. Thank you very much, and to you as well. So, Okay, so if people want to find out more about buying insurance from you or getting small business consulting from you, where could they go to find that out? Um, they can actually um, just find me on Facebook under Zachariah Jason Hernandez. Okay. Um, or yeah, so really, I mean, that's where I, I get the most of my connections because I feel like Facebook is like the everywhere. You know, it's all, it's like the telephone book of the world. It is, yeah, it <laughs> you is. You know, and and so really, they can reach out on me on there. Or they just type in Zumba Jason Abilene, I'll pop up. So. Yes, you do. And number one too, by the way. So, yeah. all right, well, I will put that in the show notes and I highly encourage you guys uh, that are watching this, make sure you look up Jason. If you need any insurance, if you need small business consulting, let me tell you, this guy's a master communicator. So if you need help with your messaging or figuring out how do I get my image out there so that people notice me, this is a good guy to give a call to. So thank you very much for being on the show. Right. I will. Uh, thank you. I will make sure you get a link when this starts, and I can't wait to see you again in the not-so-distant future. All right. You take care of yourself. All right, Jason. Take care. Thanks, man.